I'm going to share with you three of my favorite drills that I work on with students um, all the time and they target uh, the core areas which are balance, um, getting that ball first contact and of course the most important skill of all which is club face control which obviously has a huge impact on the direction of your shots. Now golf, especially in a, uh, in a YouTube and an online space is really heavily focused on technique. Uh, and almost every video is some part of your technique promising you gains and, and obviously yeah, I'm a big part of that as well. But there's an enormous amount of skill in golf. So I like to use this, whoops, this as a meta, this as a metaphor because you know, the action of, of bouncing a ball up and down on a club clearly involves very little technique. I mean, it's just, isn't it? It's just sort of holding the, holding the face at such an angle and, and rotating it as one bounces the club. But that doesn't make it easy. There's a lot of practice and skill that goes into that. And I've seen this you know, al almost on a, on a weekly basis. I'll see golfers who are technically very good in their swing, but can't deliver the strike, don't deliver power because they haven't worked on, the, on their skills. They've just worked purely down a technical route. So today we are going to see if we can uh, address that balance um, and we're going to see if we can improve your ball striking um, with three fantastic technical drills. We're going to work on your direction, so club face control, we're going to work on that ball first then divot contact and we're also going to work on your balance and see if we can learn some really core skills. First up then is low point control uh, you know, and this is, this is relevant for, for chipping, pitching and obviously for, for the full swing as well. Um, being able to, to get the low point of your swing arc so that it meets the ball first then divot is obviously absolutely crucial for ball striking and you know as I say typically we'd go down a technical route but there's a huge, there's a huge skill to it as well. So here's the, here's the first drill. Um, I've positioned this cane in the middle of my feet um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep, keep that as my centre line. Meanwhile, I've also positioned three stones um, progressively sort of further away from me. One stone, is, one, stone, stone, one stone is in the back of my stance, one's in the middle, and one's in the front. And I'm going to see whether I can put my low point, keeping my feet in the same place, put my low point um, you know, gradually further forwards as I go through the exercise. The, the technical part of it is about um, you know, keeping the weight forwards or moving the weight forwards at impact having the handle forwards at impact. So the club does need to be sort of dragged past us somewhat as we rotate our body. So we've got weight forwards, rotating, and then the skill of how, how far forwards I can, I can position my hands. Um, that's the, the technical bit, but we're working on the skill because clearly it is possible for me to hit the ground back there. It's also possible for me to hit the ground um, you know, way, way in front as well. So, you know, there's a huge, there's a huge uh, awareness and skill element. So that's why we're doing the drill. Right, ball at the back of my stance. This will be the easier one because it's behind my sternum, behind my chest. Middle. And then the forwards position, I've got to move my weight more. I've got to drag the handle a little bit more, but still achievable. So all three of those, I managed to hit the, the stone and the, and the ground at the same time. And of course, we've used the stone because it just, it just requires absolute um, accuracy and, and gives you really clear feedback. Um, then, of course, we'll, we'll do the same exercise with the ball. So, ball at the back, and you can progress this, you can make longer, longer swings if you like. That was a, a lovely sort of ball and mat sound together. Um, of course, what we, what we don't want to do is get that, that da dunk sound, you know, if you're using a mat and not hitting off grass. You, I don't know if you heard that, that was the sound of the mat and then the ball, that kind of, kind of double hit sound. Um, okay, so moving on to the, to the ball at the front. And again, a nice sound and, and uh, quality of strike, ball and mat um, together. So I would use that drill a lot when, when a player is, is struggling um, to, get, to get the low point and the technique looks quite good. You know, we, we, but we're still getting that, that double hit sound. In which case, we, we bring in the skill drill and very quickly people um, can find they can hit the stones quite well. And then it's just a case of coming back to the ball, but with an improved sense of um, awareness and, and skill. Now there's something quite um, odd that happens when we, when we use that exercise. I, I quite often use the exercise when a player, when I'm warming up, is, is hitting their pitch shots and they're, they're getting that double hit sound, um, but their technique looks quite good. So I'd introduce the stone exercise and almost instantly the player is able to find the, find the stones. Um, which is, which is odd, isn't it? Because that's much harder than hitting a ball in the, in the correct 
um, place from the start. But just kind of being open to exploring that space, um, I suppose changing your attention as well, um, can really kind of bring, bring forward these skills. So having done the stone drill, we, 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 we introduced the ball again, uh, and it's amazing how much more accurate the player is at getting that, that lovely ball first than, than mat contact. Moving on then, drill, drill number two. This, this is an old favorite and you've probably seen it elsewhere on the, on the channel. I use it for balance. I also use it to improve our, our release and, and how we create um, um, uh, fluid, loose speed with our arms. Um, balance, stability and arm and wrist um, action. A brilliant drill uh, and it doesn't require too much thinking. So the, the exercise is uh, it's actually a progression of drills. We'll start with our feet together and the aim is just to see whether we can we can strike a ball with our, with our feet together. Um, the success in this exercise really comes down to whether or not you can hit the L shapes. So that's getting the wrist to hinge here, swoosh the club past you and hinge it this side. And that means being fairly loose in your, in your arms and your grip. If you're a golfer who is very kind of tight in the way that you control the club and it's more sort of upper body, then you'll find that when you try and put speed into it, you're gonna be, it's gonna be hard pressed to press to, um, to keep your feet still. So, a loose fluid speed, keeping my, keeping my feet together. And then when, you, when you've got good at that, we progress the drill on, and now I'm gonna see if I can hit the ball off one foot. So we'll do that both ways. Just gotta be mindful of the ball position. So I'm, if I'm on my left foot, I want the ball slightly behind the left foot. The non-weight bearing foot, so the right foot in this case, I'm just going to use as a, as a very sort of delicate balance aid, just on tiptoe. Again, can I use my arms fluidly and get that club releasing um, with my wrists? It is possible to do it completely standing on one, one foot, but not, not really necessary. The other foot, most people find that they are, whoops, sort of more skilled standing on one foot than the other. Now the right foot, if I, if I just stand on my right foot, you can see how the ball is, is kind of left of me. That's a bit tricky. So I'd want the, the ball right in front of my right foot. Again, this foot's on tiptoe. Ah, not as good. I managed to sort of ground the club a bit early that time. Let's have another shot at that one. There we go. Really fantastic drill for balance, stability. Anybody who kind of overworks the body or is too stiff in the arms would find that a challenge. And, and in that challenge would find a, a better and more efficient way to move the club. But it's not completely out of context, um, you know, context with, with the game. I mean, we don't, we don't ever entirely stand on one foot. But you know, if you imagine when you're standing and hitting a ball off a, off a slope, you are going to be predominantly creating power by standing on, you know, by, by putting your weight more on one foot than the other. So, you know, in an upslope, the, the, depending on the severity of the slope, the high foot really is just a very delicate balance aid as it was for us in, in the drill. And we have to create all that power off the back foot and of course vice versa off a, um, off a down slope as well. So a um, brilliant drill for a number of reasons, definitely one to have in your sort of repertoire of, of practice exercises. And then there's my favorite drill of all, and this is all around um, direction. Now, um, you know, whatever else is happening, um, in your swing, if you're hitting the ball offline, then you haven't got control over the club face. And it's such a huge influence on the, on the ball direction. Um, just merely putting our attention and building the skill of face control can go a really long way to, to bringing in your, your shot scatter, you know, making it much more playable and making you more accurate. So that's what we're going, going to do now. We're going to challenge you with a really great skills exercise around club face. So we're gonna put an awareness scale on the club face, meaning you're going to um, try and bring the club face back at different angles. Um, and the angles are on this scale. So that would be sort of dead straight. So we'd call that a zero, open one to five, and close one to five. And the aim being to make your normal swing, but be able to deliver the club at, at different angles. And you'll see elsewhere on the site, we, we connect this skills drill with the, the circle drill as well. And, and that way really kind of working on skills and technique at the same time. Um, I'd start with big numbers, so we're going to hit some, some wide shots and then we're going to kind of refine it back to some very straight shots in a moment. So my first task is to hit a, a normal swing but with an open three club face. So 
that's bringing the club face through like so. You can see my right hand is, is underneath the shaft all the way through the hip. So that should go high, high and right if I manage to pull this one off. And that's drifted a little bit. So I'm going to say that was an open one. You know, and, it, and like with any of these skills exercise, the key is to really be, be playful with it and, and explore your, your boundaries and, and that whole space and be open to getting it wrong time and time again. So that was an open one. Let's, let's try and uh, keep the face more open this time. Or oh, maybe a bit more curve. That was probably a two. I am going downwind, which um, reduces the curve. When you've got the hang of um, open three, I clearly need more practice, you would move to, to close three. So that's a, you know, that's a motion where the, the club is turning over too early. So we'd expect a, a sort of low left hook. Oh, that was too easy. So that really kind of flung, flung left. And like I say, once you've once you've had a bit of fun with the big numbers, they're obviously not that useful in the context of the game of golf. So let's bring that skill in and refine it a little bit. We're now aiming for an, an open one and then a closed one. So open one drifts a tiny bit right. That was probably open a half. Closed one little bit left and now of course you're in that you in a that scenario where you've got skills that leave in the face very open skill that very closed you've done the smaller numbers so hitting a ball dead straight is just about finding that point in the middle but what you'll find is now you've got a, a good sort of mental reference for where those other positions are position, positions are um, you'll be much better at bringing the club face back straight Okay, let's, uh, let's put that to the test then. Let's see if we can hit a, hit a dead straight ball. So I would typically, my bad shot is left. So I'm gonna see if I can just feel the face a tiny bit open to kind of counter my, my natural habit. And sure enough, that one is pretty straight. Now I'm sure you'll agree with me, that is a really important skill. And if you can learn to, to keep your club face control so that your misses are sort of between open one, open one and close one, then you're really gonna have a predictable scatter when you're out on the golf course. Now, if you like the idea of, of bringing those skills and exercises into your, into your practice and, and working on, on really improving your game, um, uh, instead of or as well as um, working on your technique, then I've created a whole playlist of, of skills exercises down here or maybe it's here. Um, and then you can go through those at your own time and, and as I say, have a really structured skill-based practice. And if you've enjoyed the video, then as always, please click subscribe and each week I'll produce a new video like this one where we aim to keep things really simple, um, bring a slightly different angle to coaching and ultimately to improve your game.